Hi everybody. This week uh, we're going to be painting and drawing, more importantly, learning how to draw some horses. And I picked out a few images from the Royal Welsh over the last few years of the Cobb classes. And I sent you these and you can download and print the one that you want to use because they're all very similar, you use the same technique of drawing out. And we're going to do a detailed drawing this time and then we may add some very minimal colour to the, fi the finished picture at the end. Okay, so ideally some watercolour paper or some thick card or some board to draw your image onto. Alright, I'll talk you through step by step. Hope you're all well. Very excited this morning because I launched my first Facebook and Instagram ad um, in the hope to generate some more uh, new members. So hopefully that will work. We've got a nice big group at the moment and everybody seems to be quite happy um, getting lots of different images back which is great i love it when you send me your pictures of the master classes so keep doing that that's really great um there are still youtube tutorials short ones um that are free i, I try and do one a week so keep up with those i've just put on um some sunflower petals and some sunflower leaves so yeah, if, you're, if you've seen my ad, um, please share it and if you, are at her, and if you have sub, uh, subscribed and you're a new member, welcome. It's good to have you and I hope you enjoy it as much as the other members have already enjoyed it. Okay, so the next time you see me, I will be on my drawing desk here. Um, with a piece of watercolour paper and uh, a 2B pencil and a rubber. Okay, that's what you'll need. See you in a little bit. Okay, this is the image that I've chosen. I like this image because it's very dynamic. He is running through a, a sea of mud here. Um, it must have been a bad year and just shows you what these animals and these uh, leaders have to do some years when it's very wet. Um, if you want to use one of the other images then do so but I, I like this one there's not so much mane he's looking forward which is nice good leg carriage he's very dramatic so yeah this is the one I'm going to go for now I'm going to show you how to draw a horse however if this is really too much for you to to cope with <laughs> then I have several tricks one is that you can divide your paper up into inch by inch squares and then draw onto whatever surface you're going to use inch by inch squares and then you can copy it into those squares um, you can trace it you know really doesn't matter if you don't fancy doing the drawing bit then go ahead um, the other option is to get a grid transferred onto a piece of acetate like this and you can do this at any printers you could probably do it at home if your printer will take acetate um, and then what I do is it, you can also draw this on yourself it's a really useful thing to have oh, you can pick it up um, just with a permanent marker though um, so that it doesn't run these are um, I think they're 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square so they're slightly smaller than an inch by inch um, it's up to you how small you go just make sure that they're completely square and even because otherwise everything will go out of kilter and what I do is I take a poly pocket and I put the image into the poly pocket and then I put the acetate on top like that or you can even draw onto the poly pocket with a permanent marker 
So that's up to you. So you can now see that the squares are sitting on top of the image. So in the same sense, I would draw the same squares onto here with a ruler and a pencil, make sure they're accurate. And then it's just a matter of transferring each square onto each section of your drawing. Okay, so that is the cheats way of doing it, but we're gonna actually draw this. Well, I'm gonna draw it and you can, if you want to, it's up to you. All right. So the next stage is to really look at your image, really look at the dimensions and the spaces, what we call the negative spaces. So these spaces that are around the horse will help you to draw the horse itself. Often um, in college, you'll be asked to just look at the negative spaces around an image and draw those instead of drawing the actual thing. And it's amazing how it comes together. All right, so that's a, an experiment you can try. You could just try that with a simple structure like a cup or a, um, a plate or something like that, or a hand, or, you know, look at the shape in between the fingers rather than the finger itself. All right have a go um, but for today I'm going to freehand draw this I'm just going to show you a couple of little um, tips on how to do that so basic structure of a horse I mean obviously it's a good idea if you can go and look at a horse itself um, it's up to you if you've got one if you've got some horses around go and look at them take photographs of them if you work size to size that means a4 this is an a4 print and this is an A4 piece of paper, normal cartridge paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw onto this and make all my mistakes on here. And then I will transfer by tracing onto a piece of watercolour paper. And the reason why I do that is because watercolour paper is very sensitive and it doesn't like being rubbed out on. Um, so I always draw, whenever I'm doing watercolour painting, I draw onto a piece of cartridge and then I trace it through onto my watercolour paper and that saves a lot of heartache because once you put your paint onto the watercolour paper, if it's been damaged by the rubbing out or the lines, um, you'll see that the watercolour won't sit properly and you know it's not good. Okay, so how to draw a horse. I'm just going to show you a basic um, lesson. And then I'll show you how I draw this particular horse. All right. So a structure of a horse is based up of lots of, I like to look at animals and humans um, as a series of circles. So all shapes. So here you've got a circle, right? I'm going to draw onto the image here. This is a useful thing to do. I always do this as well, especially if I need help with drawing because I'm, you know, I can draw certain things. I'm not so bad at horses because I was taught quite young by my mother how to draw horses. Um, but other things like architecture and stuff like that, I, I generally need to draw the shapes on. Can you see there's another circle there and there's another circle there. And all these circles are linked up by lines. So this horse would have a ske skeletal form, so a stick form almost. The neck comes down here, the backbone is here, and then the legs would have stick. So I don't know whether you can see those marks on my paper. If I hold it closer up to the the camera then maybe you'll be able to see it a bit better so draw the circles on you can draw them in a different pencil so that you could see them a bit better you could do the same thing with a with a human so the human has a circle there an oval there and then the neck comes down to the waist Stick forms, they're really, really useful. And if you can learn to see these forms, then you will find it a lot 
easier to draw your structures okay so there's the human yeah all right so take a copy if you've got two copies more the better you can print one off in black and white uh, and draw onto it so that'll help you to see the structure of this animal okay oh and i've managed to transfer through some of my marks i'm just going to turn that over right okay so basic structure of a horse and so I'm, I'm not going to draw the one here I'm just going to draw a simple horse so that you can have a go at drawing a simple horse so basically you've got two circles a line circle a line circle and then you have legs so you would have a spine there and then if we just do a standing horse to begin with and then you can have a go at other structures so we've got four legs yeah and then you've got the hooves at the bottom of these legs okay so that's your basic structure for your horse and also for lots and lots of other different animals and then it's just a matter of so if you wanted the leg to project upwards like it's doing there then obviously you just move these marks yeah all right i'm just going to get a rubber um i can use a normal what if i've got one i've got one of these old stone rubbers i don't know whether these work let's try it shall we oh yeah they do look this is a i got a series of stone shaped rubbers years ago anyway okay so then it's just a matter of putting in the shape so you've got the curve of the neck and then it comes down into so we've got the curve of the jaw and then the straight and then the nose sort of comes out like that ears eyes nose and then the withers this is these are the withers this is the shoulder and then it goes down where the rider sits and then over the rump area and then that's where the tail will come out there and then so you're just adding the bulk of the figure on to your structure so the leg that comes down in the foreground that's the one that's nearest to you might need to be a bit longer you can make adjustments as you're going along and then we've got the fetlock here and the the hoof same in the background slightly wider at the top this one would be slightly higher than this one because it's going away in perspective think about the perspective that we learned about last week with the drawing of the chapel the same works with limbs and things like that that are going away from you and projecting towards you so we draw the hoof and then the leg that's in the distance slightly raised slightly like that okay so there you have the basic uh, drawing of a horse so if you can see things in circles or squares or but just generally in shape form then that will help you to draw this animal and we're drawing it side on which is very different to drawing it in perspective so if you were um, drawing it from the front you would the head would be like this and the body and then the legs would come down like that yeah quite difficult to draw a horse from the foreground but that's the basics of it okay have a play around with this maybe do a few drawings um, maybe a few different animals they all work the same way cows sheep the only difference between a cow and a horse is the fact that the um, this circle is closer to the head.
so you would have that shape rather than this long extended muzzle uh, the shorter the face and then even shorter for a sheep you go further up okay but we'll do more drawing as as the master classes develop um, you can draw the figure in the same way so if I move this over here I'm going to do the figure behind so head shoulders legs, knees, ankles, feet, yeah, um, elbows, wrists, elbows, wrists, hands. All right, have a go. It's really lovely way to draw. If you can see the stick forms, think like Lowry did and um, then you can add the bulk on and the clothing and all that sort of stuff. All right. So here is the final outline done onto a piece of watercolour paper. I took my original drawing, which I did on cartridge paper, and what you do is you just, well, I've got my drawing on the back here. Um, one of the ways you can transfer images is just by scratching over the back like this. Cover the back of the paper with your lead and then turn it over and you can trace it through onto any surface then. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Or you can use tracing paper or a transfer paper. Um, it's up to you. So I've now got the outline of my drawing. I've got my image in front of me so I can look at it closely. Um, I've drawn one line along the back. I may or may not put in the figures in the background. I might just leave him as he is because I quite like them as they are. So now we start to put in detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to put more pencil line in and we're also going to use some shading techniques. And I've got a 2B pencil here and it's nice and sharp. Make sure you keep your pencils nice and sharp. I sharpen mine with a knife um, or a sharpener, it's up to you. I find a knife gives me a better point. And the other thing to remember is if you're working on watercolour paper, make sure you use a putty rubber. You can use a normal rubber, but it does leave marks on your paper. So just be careful. So we're gonna do a lot of shading, I'm going to show you how to do it on the horse's head and then I'll put it on time lapse again so that you can see the build up and you get it as far as you want to get it and then we're going to put some colour on it. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in using my tripod here onto the horse's head and hopefully that won't um, impede me too much. Okay, hopefully that's nice. I will include some close-ups again um, as to how to do this. So we've got the outline of his head. Um, we're going to put the eye in. And the eye is looking almost at us. But it has an oval shape to it. Um, with a slight sort of circle within, within it. You can't see the other eye, but you can see a sort of bulge just here. The nose or the nostrils come sort of down in a almost like a, sh a square shape and within that there is a dark, a very dark area. The horse is black so we're quite lucky in that in, in that we can put lots of shading on whereas with a, a lighter coloured animal you would treat it differently. We have a forelock in here, which is sort of sweeping round because of the wind. And we're going to put some mane on as well. Some which is sort of draping downwards, but some which is flying in the wind. We've also got to put the bridle in. So the, the structure of the face is very square across here. So make sure you put the bridle... Mm, 
in so it looks like it's sitting on the form of the head rather than um, just being wrapped around it make sure you look at the angles because that will really help describe so that line comes down and then it bends in ever so slightly as it gets towards the mouth and the bit which is here uh, and it does the same on the going over the foreground of the horse's nose and then it comes down here and then there's the what they call the chin strap which comes under and then it disappears okay so get those basic structures in for the bridle and then this flash it's called a flash coming down his face there and it comes down it there's a little bit of it but it's gone into sort of a pinky tone once it gets to the muzzle you can't see the other nostril because it's round here and then even though it's quite difficult to see I do know how a horse's muzzle and mouth work so you'll be able to get a guide from this picture and I'll put a picture of this drawing up as well so that you can see how I've drawn things just in case there's not enough information on the the image for you all right so his neck is very thick this is because he's a stallion and they have extremely exaggerated forms so this is what the judges are looking for when it comes to judging so they're looking for sort of depth in the neck the shoulder the strength in the shoulder uh, the carriage of the legs and you'll see that they're just incredible go to the Royal Welsh show it's the best for cobs it's like the ultimate show for all cob breeders um, Welsh cobs that is and all sorts of Welsh ponies and horses you can see them all there alongside lots of other things it's a very good show although it hasn't been on this year because of Covid unfortunately so I don't know what these people have been I know that some people have had online um, have I gone off the picture here yes I have I've started doing the legs because I like legs <laughs> <laughs> so anyway right back up to the head um yeah we in well we didn't have a, a show we normally have a big show in Tlangadog that was cancelled but uh the in Tlandaisant which is just up the road from here they had a virtual show which was great really nice alternative so people sent photographs in instead of um actually attending it was a really good idea Okay, so let's put in a little bit of forelock and a bit of ear. So the ears, now the ears are pointing upwards and forwards. So the gap, the ear hole would be in there like that, pointing forward. Um, so this would be very dark. So we're just gonna shade the ear the back of the ear that's the furry point of the ear and then the inside of the ear um, and then into the hair now the hair the forelock would come down and it wraps around this ear here so then we go into the sections around so down underneath I'm just going to put the chin strap in the chin strap is not very thick and it's also it's very similar in tone but it has some lighter patches on it um, where there is some gold on the buckles and things like that so we'll shade that later um, I'm just going to put the eye in the eye has a lighter area just above it where the light is catching and then underneath it just has a 
darker shade where the pupil is. This area where the chin or the cheek is, sorry, is very dark. So we're going to put that in. And this is where your negative shapes come in. So not only are you effectively putting shading in on the horse's cheek, but you're describing the bridle in the process. So as you come forward and the cheek becomes more exposed, there'll be more light there. So just lighten up your marks, press heavier where it's supposed to be darker and lighten up your marks by just less pressure on your pencil just the lighter hand as you come forward okay so there are various techniques with regard to shading so you've got pressure let me just turn this over so you've got pressure so soft and hard pressure right so you've pressed harder you can also use the tip of your um, pencil and that will give you a slightly different mark and then you've got cross hatching I hope you can see this yes so if you want to get really dark marks you go one direction diagonally and then the other direction the opposite so you work over the top okay so that's called cross hatching okay um, you can use the side of your pencil so you hold the pencil differently like this and then you just use the side of your pencil and that creates a nice soft mark like that and then of course you can rub with your fingers so you rub and that blends the pencil mark okay so like that can you see all right so you can get soft marks that way by blending if you don't like using your finger um, you can use a blending tool now I've got a posh blending tool um, it's called a color shaper here but you can get them they're called blending tools and they have um, rubberized ends on them and you just literally this is a bit dirty because I was using it the other day for pastel um, but you just do that and it blends the mark can you see all right you can just use the um, finger or a piece of cloth or a rolled up piece of paper to do the same job all right so we come down to the mouth underneath here it would be darker because it's away from the light we put the mouth in but not too too much of the mouth there is a light bit there as in a bit as in a bridle bit not a bit as in a small bit <laughs> um, there's a light patch here and then there's the bridle coming over so when you come to um, shading the rest of the animal you just follow the same structure just look very closely it's this this area here is very close to the light so shade it lighter use a lighter hand like I said slightly darker here but lighter here can you see all right um, in here it's darker so this is about close observation look and then make your mark the other thing you can do is shade all this in I just put the shading in all the way evenly like that the other thing you can do is actually work with the structure of the face so you know that I was saying this is square so if you make marks going that way and then drop then you get a structure happening in the face like that so go with the form And then can you see how that works all right now you can blend with your finger or with your shaping tool 
like this and that will give you a softness to the the pencil line if you like that i actually like a pencil line i don't do too much blending but i know that a lot of my students like to blend so this is just showing you how to do it and then what you can do is take the edge or a bit of putty rubber now the putty rubber will break down in your fingers uh, into little pieces um, you can do that with a normal rubber you can just slice off a bit with a knife or whatever so if you've got a highlight so there's a highlight just here then you can take a bit of your putty rubber and just if it works that is just rub away the mark can you see that I don't know if you can see that let's just push it right up yeah so in oops just I just knocked my microphone okay so in the same way there's another highlight coming down here so you can just sort of rub I hope you can see that I hope my hand is not in the way can you see that just rub away the mark with a bit of rubber or a putty rubber okay so just follow that same process if I go down into the neck now again I'll do the same process as I just did so you can see it again so into the neck I'm just using the side I'm holding my pencil like this uh, and then I'm just going to put a light shading over the whole neck like that now if you were working in on the form you would put a mark in all the way up there going this way from left to right or right to left whichever way you want to see it down like that and then down like that yeah all right I'm going to smudge it but I'm just going to use my finger like that and then I'm going to darken things up. There's the excess cheek here. Don't forget that. I actually really like sketching. I don't do enough of it. Um, it's a really this is a really good method to sketch out um, a structure and then put a touch of paint over the top. I really like it. I do a lot of this when I'm working outside. It, it, on planet plein air as they say um, so darkness round the base of his neck again shades according to the structure if you can there's a sharp sharpness there and an extra dark area there so just press with your pencil there's a dark line which is where the main starts just there and then there's these weird sort of lines which are just his neck um, wrinkling and he's got a darker patch under here which is the shadow probably being projected by the main Um, if you've got different pencils as well, so if you've got like 2B, 3B pencils, then don't be frightened of using those as well. You can smudge it in again, just because you'll get different results with the different softnesses of the pencils. But this horse is black, so don't be frightened of really going in and putting in these darker sections keep knocking the microphone sorry if that's making noises make sure you get the real definition that happens between the real darks like his face probably needs to be a little bit darker here etc and again like I said just take your finger and rub and then take your putty rubber and you can reveal some highlights so again in the same way just use the rubber in the same way just rub away the highlights here like that there's some more defined highlights as they come down off there and now we're into 
we can do more work there I just wanted to show you how to carry on so now we're now into the sort of the main area and again just in with a few marks don't over don't do this over the top right it's really important a lot of people love manes and tails and and they end up putting loads of hair on there i mean you know there's you can do that if you want to but don't go overboard they end up looking like some kind of weird magical unicorn type creature rather than a real horse so again put the dark shadows the darker points of the hairs in you can always remove this if it goes over um, and then you can put some highlights in later so it comes down and over the other side of the horse's head there um, so in the same sense you can take the putty rubber again I'm just going to pinch off another bit and I'm just going to put in some highlights on this on the hair Oops. okay so carry on like that and do the rest of the horse I'm going to do it I'm just going to put, push this down again so you can see it a little bit closer okay I'm going to put it on time lapse but you just follow the same uh, method with the horse with the man and any other detail that you want to put on okay enjoy Okay, so I'm quite happy with the finished drawing here. You can put some people in the background if you want to. It's up to you really as to how much detail you want to go into. The, let's have a look at the drawing. There's people out of focus, so it's quite nice. You could do it wet in wet and just sort of dot some colour in. It's up to you. All right. But me, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So the horse is black now you might have black in your set um, but black can be very matte in tone in watercolor i mean you can do this in very thin acrylic um, but watercolor is the best and instead of using black i'm using a thing called Payne's gray um, which is a sort of black a more subtle black between a black and a dark gray and you can see that it paints on real nice it's not as flat the result is not as flat as black there's a bit there i don't know what let's get that off so you can do as much or as little of this as you like again you could just put it on in places you know you don't have to cover the pencil work up completely it it's really nice when it's just subtle be careful around the bridle because we want the bridle to be um, lighter and oh and on his flash I'll just put some on his flash there just paint around the flash and around the eyes but like I said you know if you don't want to paint this over with watercolour then you don't have to but you can still see the impact of the pencil underneath once it's dried and you can put highlights in low lights shadows with by adding more paint more and more paint as you're going along it 
you can thin it down and just spread it by adding more water and you can get rid of dry edges like that one there you see where that's dried just by adding more water this is why we're working on don't forget that his sock this is his sock is white dry edges that's where wet watercolour has hit dry paper it forms a barrier can be solved by just adding more water and like I said this is why we're using watercolour mainly because it's transparent which means that your pencil lines will come through but also because it leaves a nice finish the hooves tend to be um, a sort of brown some of them are black um, but a lot of black horses have brown hooves um, so just be aware of that you'll be able to see well you would be able to see in that picture if it wasn't just completely muddy you can sort of see a bit of color on on um, on the, the feet that are raised up and with the tail and the mane you can let's just move that in because that's going to be a bit harsh there I think you can add a few extra sort of swirls coming off the, the tail with the, the paint it's a bit more subtle than using a, um, pencil so like that same with the mane make sure you work from from the neck out though so that you end up with um, fine lines don't use the tip of your brush use it on the vertical so that you get because otherwise you get chunky shapes like that one there coming up and they don't look very natural so work from the neck outwards like that one's a bit clunky isn't it see so just be careful put a few wisps coming out this way as well and you can always add more later if you find that you need some more in okay um like i said if you wanted to darken things up he's very dark under here so you know you can put some more shadow to define use the brush use it going upwards like that and then you'll get a more natural finish smooth it in by wiping your brush off and just dragging it upwards like so you can even pick up some of the paint and move it to areas where it needs darkening Look, he's got a dark patch there he's very dark under here so you can sort of drag rather than adding more paint just drag a little bit out drag it down into areas that need it don't go too dark because if you go too dark you'll end up losing your lovely pencil work so don't go too dark i think i'm going to put a little bit around in fact i'll just pick up a bit from there so i'll just put a bit around here because his neck is very dark a bit more direct pigment so like i said i've all i've used here is Payne's gray so you can see how how lovely it is On his face, I'm going to put a bit of dark pa Payne's grey in here because I want that to be more defined. And underneath here, mm. 
I don't want to do too much to his face but I might go in there with a smaller brush if you want to put some colour on the hooves just use a little touch of brown and just put a flash like that it's much better to have a subtle suggestion of a hoof rather than it being too hard uh, you can also put shadows uh, ex extend your shadows with your Payne's grey like that he's got black socks on so you can he's got socks and then and then he's got football boots on but I don't want to make too much of him because the main subject is the horse so don't put too much effort into painting the fella unless you really like the fella and then you can do that his stick just using a, a thinner brush just so that I have a bit more control over the stick um, I'm going to go in with a little bit touch of brown on his hair just in the shadow area around here like this like that um, and then if you want you can use a little bit of pale blue mix a bit of blue with a bit of dirt on your palette just so that it goes a bit grey um, and we'll put that use it quite thin we'll put that on his sleeves where the shadows are like this just so that he gets a little bit of shadow suggestion of shadow so you're not painting this white really you're just putting in the suggestion of a bit of color on those shadows all right so it's like that in around here And then it goes to a touch purple on his trousers. If you must put a little bit of colour on his skin use alizarin crimson very watered down and test it on the sheet before on a oh i got a splash damn never mind right okay it'll give me the opportunity to show you how to um lift that off just in around his face very pale though don't um don't do it too dark because um it ends up looking like a children's drawing if you go in too dark okay so i'm going to leave that there i might put just a flat actually i keep saying this i always say i'm going to leave it there and then i decide not to i'm just going to put a little bit of green Let's put a bit of green in. Now, greens straight out of the palette are very harsh. Just knock them back with a bit of yellow or a bit of brown. Um, when you do sort of green flashes like this, make sure that you continue them all the way across and off the page. And then I'm going to put a little bit of blue and I'm going to just put some colour on this background like that 
Okay, let's lift off. So if you have an accident like this, what you need is clean water and clean um, rag or something. If I've got a rag somewhere, I'll get it. Um, just going to get hot. This isn't very clean, but it's dry. So wash your brush off and then just dab it off on a rag. Put the colour, bit of water, on top of the paint. Now I'm gonna need a clean uh, rag. Oh, I haven't got any tissue. Uh, let's have a look. Okay. Right, okay. I've got a bit of cloth, a bit of old, um, and I can tear it. Bit of oh, need a pair of scissors. Never mind. So I've got a bit of canvas here. So I'm just going to lay this down on top, flat, once, like that. Just press. Don't move it. Don't scrub it. And you can see that the pigment comes off. So if you use a a piece of tissue or something like that and then just repeat it until it's gone you need to let the water sort of soak into the paper you might not get it all off but that's not bad I'm quite pleased with that so if there was any pigment it really depends on the um, color that's on there some pigments stain more than others so if that wasn't coming off very well the next alternative is to just cover it just take imagine that it's the sky and cover like that okay enjoy you can once this is dry if you think oh like to go back in and put some more pencil on once it's dry you can work over the top of it in pencil like this but make sure it's dry because otherwise you'll um, carve your paper up you can also go in and, and use a bit of pen you know so there's lots of different things that you can do to enhance this painting all right don't forget to sign your work and date it Good luck, hope you enjoy it and um, let me know if you have any problems. I can see that once it's dry, I can see that these, these are a bit sharp, aren't they? So I can just go in with a bit of water and just soften, just a touch of water, not too much, and just soften them up. That might be one problem that you saw okay you can also put some color on his bridle um, a little bit of yellow or something if you wanted to just to make it stand out make it look a bit brassy all right so you fiddle with it as much as you like i'll put some close-ups in so you can see details I, actually i could just do this so if i just go in you can see the horse's head. I might work on the face a bit more. Round to his tail, down to his feet, across his legs. The hands are difficult. You might want to work into those as well. Okay. Enjoy and I will see you next week. Stay safe everybody and please share uh, the membership information with people you know. Pass on info for me so I can get more members. That would be fantastic. And welcome new members and I hope you have a good week. Stay safe everybody. Bye.